listeners are ready. Yeah, that's first things first. How are you guys doing? How are you guys getting prepared for this? Yeah, so far so good, man. It's just part of being down in Florida in September. Uh, thankful that we're in a we're in a good spot. No evacuation necessary for us, so we're okay. Just uh, thinking about all the people who have to uproot and move around and doing all that stuff. So it's tough. It's tough. So well, good luck with everything, man. We're we're thinking about you, uh, and I know you know you're the AP senior NFL writer and insider, so you know the entire league. But of course, you are living in Florida, living in that Tampa area. So you have a little bit of a closer look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers than we do here in Philadelphia. Uh, So we want to start talking about this matchup a little bit. Obviously, the weather might be a factor, uh, but even playing surface, right? Let's just start there. Even playing surface. Can you tell us a little bit more about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers so far through three weeks in 2024? Yeah, uh, first week of the season, guys, they, they get a rookie quarterback in Jaden Daniels, and, and Todd Bowles has always been tough on rookie quarterbacks, his first career start, and, and they do what they're supposed to do. They take care of business. And then they go to, to Detroit, and, and what's a, an emotional revenge game type matchup, the team that knocked them out of the playoffs, and I thought they, they really asserted themselves nicely there. Surprised a lot of people the way they played. Baker Mayfield had a great game. Defense stuffed a banged up defense, missing guys, banged up offense, just missing players. And, and then now they're off to a two and zero start. And and here's the problem: suddenly now they they think they've accomplished something. They think that they're a, a great football team that can just show up and beat the Denver Broncos with a rookie quarterback who's zero and two. And they absolutely laid an egg. They were terrible. Uh, last week against Denver, uh, still beat up, still banged up, a lot of injuries. But uh, what concerned me from a Buccaneers standpoint is when you hear players like Baker Mayfield talk about lacking fire and other guys talking about not being ready, that, that calls into question leadership. Like how can you show up for a football game at 2-0, and haven't won any Super Bowls, that's Five years ago, four years ago, with Tom Brady, this is this is a new team, new everything, and, and think that you can beat a Sean Payton coached football team. Sean Payton's had Todd Bowles' number when he was in New Orleans, and and it showed, it reflected in their performance out there. So this is kind of a big game for the Buccaneers. It's, it's, it's show who you are. What is your identity? Are you going to be that team that started hot? And what suddenly, guys? I think the NFC South is no longer looked upon as eight or nine wins is going to get you in the playoffs. The Saints are a good football team. The Atlanta Falcons are coming on. So it's good. it's going to take nine or ten wins at least to win the NFC South. So this is a big week. Now that same emotion that they went to Detroit with, they know they're going to expect from the Eagles who got knocked out of the playoffs, and we know how ugly that went for, for the Birds last year. So they're expecting that this week. They're, they're missing some guys. Antoine Winfield, their all-pro safety. Vita Vea, their star nose tackle, may or may not play. Elijah Cansey, their their second-year defensive tackle, he may not play. So it, it's going to be tough on the Buccaneers against this Eagles team. One thing I know about my old college classmate Todd Bowles is that uh, he is he's got tried and true methods that he believes in, and he's going to go after it again. He's had great yeah. success against Jalen Hurts. The right side of the offensive line looks like it's going to be at least potentially manipulated for the Eagles. He's not going to have his top two wide receivers most likely. Uh, They're going to be able to focus on Saquon Barkley, but can they stop him? Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, Todd Bowles knows how to attack, be aggressive, take advantage of weaknesses, and I asked him yesterday, guys, because we know there's more on Jalen Hurts' plate this year. He's got more responsibility at the line of scrimmage. Jason Kelsey's not there, and, and I know that's been talked about quite a bit. And Todd was, Doc said he hasn't seen any kind of drop-off. He, he thinks that Jalen's doing a great job picking up the calls, picking up the blitzes. So the Buccaneers, if, if you're going into this game, and there's no Devontae Smith, there's no A.J. Brown, you're going to focus on Saquon Barkley, and Al Scotter. And, and the Eagles are just going to have to match up and, and try to win those battles. It's a little bit harder if you don't have Lane Johnson. It's a little bit harder if, if you're missing the guys who you are going to go to battle with up front and just try to win one, those one on one wars. It's going to help the Eagles if Vita Vea and Kalaja Kansi aren't, aren't playing. If they're out, you can run the football on the Buccaneers. And, and there were some 
The Broncos had some success last week on the ground. Bo Nix ran a little bit, made some plays. We know Jalen can do that. And I think this is a week where you're going to need Jalen to do more of that. We, we haven't seen him through the first three weeks. He's kind of picked his spots. This may be a game where you need Jalen to go for 80, 90, or 100 yards because you're lacking so much, uh, so many guys around him. But somebody's got to step up, whether it's Jahan Dotson, whether it's Johnny Wilson. Like, it's crazy to even say these names. But, guys, I go back to uh, a, a, an era of Eagles football where they won must win games, and their wide receivers were Greg Ward and. Yep. Robert Davis and Deontay Burnett, and I can't even remember who, who was the other guy. It, this is even before the Travis Fulgham became a superstar for four weeks era. So you remember that at the end of 2019. Yeah, it was it's when they were 5-7 and seven and they won the four straight and got to the playoffs. Yeah, and, and, and they, they, they had, it, it was like Josh Perkins and, and all of these. So they've been able, now, different team and every, but we've seen where Eagles football can win and be successful, and they still got more talent. You still got Saquon Barkley, you got Dallas Goddard, you got Jalen Hurts. I think you got to go out there and and whatever it is, believe in your scheme and find a way. And, and I think they're going to do it. Now, can Jalen Hurts do it? And I asked this for a reason because he's obviously had his struggles against Todd Bowles in the past. Uh, what do you expect Sunday that Todd Bowles could throw his way? That's clearly worked in their previous matchups. Yeah, uh, although the Eagles did win the one game. Remember last September, they, they beat them. They pounded the ball on the ground. I think they had a nine-minute drive to close that game out. So Jalen has had – they've had some very little bit of success, but they did win that game. I think Todd Bowles is going to have to just – he's going to have to come after Jalen and, and pick his spots because without – Without A.J. and Devontae, you can now focus more in on making this game, making Jalen Hurts beat you in the air. So uh, I, I'm expecting Todd Bowles to, to get it as, as aggressive as he's ever been, force the Eagles to have to win the game in the air, try and shut down Saquon, try to take Dallas Goddard out of this game. And uh, if Antoine Winfield and doesn't look like he's going to play, that's going to help Goddard. Uh, at least they, they still got Levante Davis. They do have uh, Levante David. They do have some good linebackers, playmaking linebackers, some ability there. But th- this is a game where it, I wish you could see both sides with all their pieces because it would be so much better of a matchup if you got AJ and you got Devontae and you got all those injured Buccaneers because it'll be it's better football. Now, I hate seeing football games where teams are missing important key star players, but that's what it is. That's the world of the NFL we're in now. I, I think there's like a hundred offensive linemen on injured reserve. It's some crazy astronomical number, and we're three weeks into the season, guys. It's going to continue to be this way. And it's it, towards by the end, it's not who's the best team. It's who's the healthiest team and has been able to navigate most of these injuries. Last thing, Rob, just curious to get your thoughts on Nick Sirianni through the first three weeks. Uh, it's been talked <laughs> about a lot here in Philadelphia. No way. <laughs> it's four <laughs> yeah. downs, I bet, right? No, go ahead. <laughs> well, what do, you, what do you think? I mean, the, the decision-making, the stuff he said, he's – you know, he's backed it up in the press conference. I believe in this. It's my conviction. Then he follows up with the next press conference saying, I don't have to talk to this about this anymore with you guys. Like, what have you made of Nick Sirianni through three weeks? Oh, man. Andrew, John, I, I look at this from a distance, and, and I go, it's exactly what we expect of the scrutiny of Nick Sirianni coming off of last year, the way it ended, and the way that this season – was entered upon is he's the CEO head coach. So if you're the CEO head coach, you got the defensive coordinator doing his job, the offensive coordinator doing his job, and then all of a sudden Nick is taking the blame on a fourth and one at the end of the half that doesn't pan out. I don't say and it's his call. I, I don't know if he made the call or Kellen Moore made that call. He says I, he made he says he made it. Yeah, he says he made and it. And Kellen I, and Kellen says he made it. I, I think I think there's a possibility where Nick wants the, the blame on him and the credit on Kellen. So I wouldn't rule out. He says he made it. Kellen says he made it. I wouldn't rule out that Nick is going to take the blame anytime something on fourth down doesn't work. And if it works, hey, that was a great scheme, great design by Kellen. Uh, great guys we, we put in, into this position. It, it's 
it's hard to, it's hard to imagine Kellen Moore is calling plays from from the three to the one, right? As you're driving, whatever it may look like, and then suddenly Nick steps in and says, "Hey, I got this one." I think it's stranger. No. I think it's stranger to believe that that doesn't happen when both guys that say it happens. They, both they, guys they, said they, it happened. So it, it's very likely that it that it did happen, but I I also wouldn't rule out that they're going to continue to or Nick's going to continue to want to take the blame anytime it doesn't work out. I'll be I'll be curious to see what it looks like this week when they they're going to miss on a fourth down at some point, and, and Nick's going to say I took. Do you do you think Nick at any point is going to say that was Kellen's call? Yes, that was Kellen. Yeah, I think he's going to say it's collaborative. Oh yeah, we always says ahead. that because he, yeah, he's right? word it's, salad. That's yeah, what he it, is. It's collaborative. It's we've all had input. We all have these plays that we like in certain situations that we discussed all week. And but but Nick, who made that call? Oh, that's on me. It's going to be that's on me. That's on me. So it, it's a it's a unique situation right now. And anytime it doesn't work. Everybody's going to question it. The, the one I didn't like was uh, right before the fourth and 11, 60 yard field goal attempt was why not run the football and get it five yards closer? If you know you're going to kick a 60, try to get it to a 55. Absolutely. Just, right? Just run the ball and do that. But uh, the scrutiny is going to be there. I, I, I know what Philly's like. You, you guys are. are are going to be all over it, and, and deservedly so. And, and this is this is the way. This is what the Eagles' situation is this year, and with a head coach who's kind of taken that step back and is is overseeing the entire process. But I don't imagine guys any time where it's going to be a failed fourth down or a failed anything where Nick's going to point the finger at someone else. Well, you're not he's far. Gonna, you're not far removed from your days of sports talk radio, so you know what it's all about. Thank Rob. you, buddy. <laughs> we appreciate it, man. <laughs> <laughs>